And so what we are seeing now within society is rational man losing reason, being ruled by passion. Hey, it's good to see you. I changed my mind about something, about the, the eclipse that just happened on April 8th. And leading up to it, I knew there was going to be a lot of people out there in the world trying to find the spiritual significance by looking up into the stars. And I just wasn't interested in being one of those people. And then, I don't know, I got curious and I started looking into it. And in one respect, my mind has changed. And I don't think that this lunar eclipse is, if there is a message, put it this way, if there is a message in all of this, I don't think we're done. So let me explain. First off, should we be looking up into the sky looking for signs? Well, I think about the wise men who are looking for Jesus. They didn't look at a map. They looked to the stars and they found the Savior of the world. So God revealed something to them in the stars. And then I think about what happened to Jesus when he was hanging on that cross. Scripture says darkness covered the earth. So something happened up in the sky in the middle of the day for three hours. It got dark. Was that an eclipse? And then I remembered what Our Lady revealed to the children from Our Lady in Fatima. Now this comes from the Vatican website. Our Lady of Fatima said, When you see a night illuminated by an unknown light, know that this is the great sign given you by God that He is about to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, famine, and persecutions of the Church and of the Holy Father. To prevent this, I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart and the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. So Our Lady of Fatima is saying that God is going to give a sign in the sky. And this is a great sign to warn you of a great chastisement. And to prevent this, consecrate Russia to my Immaculate Heart and have communions of reparation. Well, what happened? There was a great light in the sky on January 25th, 26th, 1938, preceding the Second World War. That night, the sky was lit by, some would say, Aurora Borealis, a great display of lights in the sky. And what happened? Well, shortly after that, the Second World War broke out. The point is this. Can God use signs in nature to point us to something, to catch our attention? And yes, it seems that this is within our Catholic tradition. So bringing this to what happened on April 8th, we have the solar eclipse. What does the moon represent? Well, traditionally, the moon represents Mary. This is what Archbishop Fulton Sheen said. God who made the sun also made the moon. The moon does not take away from the brilliance of the sun. All its light is reflected from the sun. The Blessed Mother reflects her divine son. Without him, she is nothing. With him, she is the mother of men. So within our Catholic tradition, the moon is often represented as Mary. The moon doesn't shine forth with its own brilliance. It only takes from the sun and then reflects it back to us. Mary's the same thing. She says, my soul magnifies the Lord. How does it do it? Because of what she has received. And so here, what does the sun represent? Often God. And so during the solar eclipse, what happened? We have the sun. To, the, to those who were in the path of the eclipse, it looked like the sun entered the moon. On the same day that we celebrate the Feast of the Annunciation, where Mary is overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, and we celebrate the incarnation of God, the Word becomes flesh. So in the solar eclipse, it appears as though the moon is closed by the sun, or the sun comes inside of the moon. Well, Mary overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, and the result, the Savior of the world. One day after we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, the only reason that we have mercy is because God became one of us. He became our Savior. And so then we look at the path of this eclipse. And you probably have seen this before in different videos, but the path you know, starts near a town called Jonah. And it passes through the United States, 
partially Canada. And it passes through a number of towns with the name Nineveh. Now, why is this significant or could it be significant? Well, what do we know from the Old Testament? In the Old Testament, we have the prophet Jonah, commissioned by God to go tell the people of Nineveh to repent, to turn from their ways. And if they don't, what will happen? In 40 days, this city shall be destroyed. So he goes into the city and the people are moved. And guess what happens? Even the king repents and they fast for 40 days. And God does not send this chastisement. And so here we have the solar eclipse, the passing through the cities of Nineveh. The question is, do we take that message and now say, okay, is it done? I don't think so. Perhaps maybe we should repent. Because in 40 days from the solar eclipse, I think we find ourselves on the Feast of Pentecost. Another great feast day of the church, the birth of the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Great grace for us. Now, am I saying that I know for sure this is all the will of God and I know what God is revealing through all this? Not at all. I just think it's neat that creation can point to what we already know through divine revelation. And so I think it's worth meditating upon. It's worth thinking about. But one thing we do know for sure is that we need to repent. We need to turn from sin. If you look at the world, don't you get a sense that we're kind of in a tinderbox that is about to explode? You don't need to, to be a prophet to see this. You have potentials of the, a third world war breaking out. We have economic hardships. We have great immorality, a total rejection, it seems, of God. Society cannot continue this way without thinking there will be no consequence. When you reject God, there is consequences. You can just see this at a natural level. Think about virtue. If you get rid of virtue in a person's life, what happens? Really bad consequences. In fact, over the long term, they have a string of destroyed relationships in their wake. A person, a person who lacks virtue is not comfortable to be around. They're not safe to be around. So that's just at the natural level. You remove virtue from a person, they're full of vice, there's consequences. What if you do that with a society? There's consequences. Friends, like we're killing babies, like it's nothing. We redefine marriage like it's nothing. And we think there's going to be no consequence. Marriage is the building block of society. So when you redefine what marriage is, you will destroy society. As the family goes, so goes society. I think John, John, St. John Paul II said that. So it does feel, at least to many, that we're on this tipping point. You cannot live a life without God and think, well, nothing's going to happen. Not true. And then I think of St. Faustina and the beautiful messages of mercy. That now is a time of mercy. But God also warned her of a time of justice. This is from her diary. Jesus said, Before I come as a just judge, I first open wide the door of my mercy. He who refuses to pass through the door of my mercy must pass through the door of my justice. And then again he said, I am prolonging the time of mercy for the sake of sinners. But woe to them if they do not recognize this time of my visitation. It seems to me that we have experienced a great time of mercy. And I'm grateful for this. But doesn't it seem like the tides are shifting and shifting quickly. When you reject God, you lose reason. And we see this within society. People think it's reasonable that they get to self-define who they are. If I was born, born a man, well, I get to decide now to be a woman or vice versa. This, this is really an indication of a loss of reason as a result of rejecting God. 
If you look at Adam and Eve in the garden, one, one thing that after they fell out of relationship with God is they lost their reason. And you can see this by the fact that they tried to hide on God. How can you hide on God? He's all powerful, he's all knowing, and he's everywhere. So when they took the fruit they ate and they fell out of relationship with God, they also lost their reason. And so what we are seeing now within society is rational man losing reason, being ruled by passion. And we cannot think that if society continues this way, there will be no consequence. We have experienced a time of great mercy. What do you think? Are we about to enter a time of justice? I don't know. But the direction that we're moving in is accelerating away from God. But one thing that we should remember, Scripture tells us, is that where sin abounds, grace abounds more. So that as we continue to see this great diabolical disorientation, we can also have great confidence to know that as sin increases, grace abounds even more. Great saints will come out of this time. It may not be that the church flourishes at all, Maybe we see a slow dwindling of Catholicism. I think this is what we've been seeing over the last many years, and I think it probably continues. I'm not saying that the church is going to be overrun and it's going to be disappearing, but look, just look in the West what's happening. Vocations are down. The pews pews are typically empty. It's just not going very good for the church. It's the truth. But with this little maybe remnant, great saints can rise. And I think that's a great consolation from us, that we should not get discouraged when we see all this craziness going around us, but to know that God comes to us with great grace, individually. That He comes to us individually with a great grace of conversion, that we can know Him deeply and personally. This is a a special time of grace. Let's not miss it. As the craziness gets crazier around us, let's have great confidence to know that our God is very generous. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Share with me below. What do you think? Have we experienced a great time of mercy and now is a time of justice upon us? Let me know your thoughts.